welcome once again to my makeshift laboratory on the corner of my bed. Today I want to have a play with multiple turns through ferrite rings. And uh, I've got a piece of wire here, random length, I don't know what it is. And the thing says, the, this is a digital LCR tester and it's on the 200 micron range. And it says this is 2.7 micro henrys, including the, the leads. The exact value isn't really important. Um, now, the, apparently the the inductance of a, a coil wound through a core depends on the number of turns. But it's a bit debatable. What is a turn? Um, if if I put this on the cable and clip it on, it goes up from 2.8 to 3.4. That's not a turn. That's just a pass through. So should we, should we be using the term turn or pass through? Um, anyway, I shall use the term pass through for this. Um, Let's hold that value. And uh, let's wind a turn. Well, let's pass it through again. Okay, so... Now we've got what I would consider to be a complete turn. I'll pull it tight. And clip it on again. Now what have we got? It's gone up to 5.5 microhenries for one complete turn, which is two pass-throughs, the uh, two passes through the core. I shall hold that value and pass another turn through. So this is three passes now, isn't it? Two turns, three passes, and it's gone up to 8.7 microhenries. Let's go on until we run out of wire. Is that three turns, four passes? Now we've gone up to 13.4 microhenries. That was three turns and four passes, so let's go to four turns and five passes. Twenty point. 20.3 Okay, what was that? That was one, two, three, four turns. Let's do five turns. I know I could shorten this video by doing all this fast, I suppose, but you probably want to see what I'm doing. 27.9 28, 27.9 Make your mind up Another turn Apparently it should go up as the square of the number of turns Twenty-eight It's gone up to thirty-seven point seven so you can see the more turn, more times you can pass the uh, the wire through the core, the more effective it is. If you remember, it was only about 0.7 of a micro only for the first pass through, and that's getting a bit difficult to go through now. I 
shouldn't have bent that end over. Thirty-seven point seven to forty-eight point six. So really romping on now, aren't we? Have you lost track of the number of returns? Because I have. And I'm nearly run out of wire. No, it's not as yes, it's going to go through. Nearly there, folks. What's it going to be? 59? Oh, 61. And I don't think I can get another turn through, but I'll have a go. No, it's, it's not going to go, is it? Oh, I don't like to be beaten. Nobody ever beats me. Well, ferrite rings do, perhaps. There you go, that's another turn. Let's measure that. Somebody started up a QSO in the other room. Guess. 73. Oh, 75.2. Right. How many turns is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine turns, ten passes through the core, and uh, seventy five point two micro Henry's, and um. I think this this core is the uh, is the higher frequency version because it doesn't show any resistance when you uh, take this thing and you stick it on the very highest mega ohm range and you test the actual core for resistance. It's not conductive, look. So I think this is the, uh, is it the nickel manganese, the, uh, the higher frequency one. But anyway, we can work that out. Um, what else is there to say about that, really? I'll, uh, I'll measure these dimensions. Trusty tape measure. I haven't got a proper ruler. Or a proper rule, as we were taught at school. We don't say ruler because rulers rule countries. So what is that? That I guess that is a 40, 41, 40, no, hang on, what am I talking about? 10, 20. 22 millimetres length, diameter, I should have done this beforehand, shouldn't I? I am really unprepared for this. I don't know. Anyway, the gap is, I would say, about 7, 7 millimetres. And the total diameter is about um, fourteen millimeters, thirteen or fourteen millimeters. So we can try and work things out from that. Just to clarify this uh, notion of what is a turn. This is the conventional idea of a single turn coil. It starts, it goes round, and it ends back where it starts. One complete turn. 
So how does that translate to ferrites? Well, there's your turn going through the ferrite. From start once through and then round the back to where it starts. So that's a complete turn. But that actually doesn't have much effect, so let's just prove that. What's important is pass-throughs. Or shall we call them passes? Um, when we're talking about calculating the number of turns for a given inductance, we, we need really to talk about the number of passes. So, uh, as before, 200 microenergy range. The coil is measuring coil plus the cables measuring 2.1 microhenries. Now let's pass the the pass the wire through the core once. Clip that on. We now have 2.6 microhenries. Now if we bring the coil bring the wire round to form a complete loop we now have a complete um, turn. But it's no different. Oh, this, the, the leads on this are a bit wonky, come on. Okay, 2.4. Bring it round and it, as you can see it makes no difference. And that's because while this piece of wire inside there is fully enclosed in a magnetic circuit. This piece of wire on the outside is not. Unlike an air cord coil, most of the inductance from this comes from the bit that passes through the core and this bit on the outside does nothing because only part of its um, only part of the magnetic field around that piece of wire is actually passing it through the core. Most of the circuit is air and that means that the um, permeability is incredibly low. Permeability, permeative, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever it's called, I'm not an engineer. I only make the tea. But anyway, what we should talk about is passes, not turns. Okay? Here's the summarised results for the uh, first core, 21 millimetres long uh, by 13 millimetres outside diameter and seven millimeters inside diameter. And what we found that when you passed the wire through the core once, you got 3.4 microhenries total. Now, without passing it through the core, it was 2.8. So we can take that off the uh, we can take the 2.8 of all the figures, all of these figures include the 2.8, so we can remove that and we get this column here. So for a single pass we got 0 0.6 microhenries. For two passes we got 2.7, three passes we got 5.9 and so on. That's the corrected measured in inductance. Now we know the inductance is proportional to the number of turns squared and so if we divide the inductance by the number of turns squared we get a we should get a constant and we get something so I've done that and we get roughly these sort of constants here. Now it does change because 
when you pass the wire through the core, you're increasing the abductance due to the core itself, but also because you're passing it, you're making a turn. But the inductance due to actually passing it through the core rises rapidly with the number of turns, whereas the inductance due to winding an air cord coil only goes up very slightly. So the more turns you've got, the more accurate the, um, the inductance value, the more you can discount the effect of the wire itself. So for this purposes, I'm going to ignore these low values. Although in real, in, in practice, you would only pass the, um, the, the wire through the core once or twice for um, normal suppression purposes. But in any case, let's, let's do this so that we can try and work out what sort of mix it is. Um, it looks like around about 0.7 is the number of microhenries per square passes um, and from that we can we can work out the inductance of any coil that we wind on this thing roughly now I have to say this is valid only for this core geometry if you have a different length or a different thickness there or a different diameter there it will be different and it will be different for a different ferrite mix um, but this is for this core. We can do the same for any other core, but for this core, we can use this value around about 0.7 to work out how many turns we need for a given inductance or how much inductance we'll get for a given number of turns. Now it turns out there's, um, what sort of mix is it? That's the other question. Well, we think it's um, a nickel-zinc mix because it's got uh, very high resistivity. Um, and it's a suppression type material. So if we go on the Fairrite website, they've got a handy calculator where you can put in the dimensions of your coil and uh, and they work out something called the initial permeability from your measurements and it turns out that if we put the thing the figures into this thing into this calculator we get an initial permeability of 278 And the closest match to that is type 52, which is a BHF UHF suppression material. Now the type 43, commonly used at HF, has got an initial permeability of 800. That's way too much. And the type 61, the other popular one, is a, an initial permeability is only 125. So it can't be that one. So we think it's this one. But uh, not entirely sure. Um, but I think that's pretty much it.